Hi, this is Len. Welcome to the Kindle Chronicles. Today is Friday, March 27th, and I'm preparing this episode at Ocean Park, Maine, looking out at the ocean at about 6.20, so the light is long and yellow, beautiful on the waves, and I have got a good show for you. I hope you're going to enjoy the conversation that I had with my wife Darlene earlier this morning down on the porch looking out at the ocean just after sunrise, uh, talking about Kindles and Kindle Oasis, Echo Show, and life in self-quarantine as we approach the end of a two-week period of being pretty careful to stick to ourselves here. And uh, so far, neither of us have got symptoms of the flu. I hope you're okay and that you're taking advantage of this very odd time that we're in of uh, isolation and complete rebooting of what we think is normal in the face of a lot of uncertainty. And I'm certain that uh, it's good to be alive and it's good to be connected to people. So thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, Before we get to the interview, I want to talk to you about news regarding Amazon and how it's handling the coronavirus outbreak pandemic. I thought I might have someone from the company be able to join us, but I made the approach and it wasn't possible to get someone. I'm sure everybody there is pretty busy, but I have done some reading online that has uh, interested me and I want to pass along to you. The piece which interested me the most that showed up five days ago, March 22nd, was a Jeff Bezos' letter to employees on Instagram. It took up just three and a half short pages on Instagram, and he started it with his traditional Dear Amazonians. Uh, and it included, uh, I, what I like about it is it's, it's pretty clear to me when Jeff is writing his own stuff. There was that famous post he did on Medium when he was basically being blackmailed by uh, the National Enquirer over photos that had been taken that put him in a bad light. And, you know, there was a very fierce piece that he wrote, and it, it just sounded like him. I, it didn't sound like it had been written by a committee. This letter of employees had that same personal way of writing that has become characteristic of him. I think you you see it in the letters to stockholders each year. He writes a letter that uh, is pretty much straight from the horse's mouth. And this had that same tone. Uh, One statement early on, he said, I'm sad to tell you I predict things are going to get worse before they get better. And uh, he was effusively thanking employees uh, for their service and characterizing their work uh, in high terms, which I think are appropriate because of the essential nature of the work that Amazon is doing. We're seeing it right here in Ocean Park, Maine, where we're able to buy food. We have a a whole foods delivery that which is scheduled to arrive tomorrow. It took a little while to, to get it. It's certainly not as fast as it was, but knowing what the environment is, I find it sort of miraculous that we can sit here in quarantine and order food and have it just delivered to the house. And this is, I think, being done uh, all around the country. And in order to uh, recalibrate for the work that Amazon is doing in the face of the coronavirus, Bezos confirmed that they're hiring for 100,000 new roles, he uh, described it, and they're raising wages for hourly workers, fulfilling orders and delivering to customers. He noted that restaurants and bars have been forced to shut doors, and he said, we hope people who've been laid off will come work with us until they're able to go back to the jobs they had. Uh, He said that there have been changes to prioritize stocking and delivery of essential items, and the ones he listed specifically were household staples, (laughs) think toilet paper, sanitizers, baby formula, and medical supplies. Uh, He also mentioned what is being done for employees that can't work from home. Uh, He talked about preventive health measures for employees and contractors that include uh, cleaning, more frequent cleaning, and social distancing, arranging the way work happens at all the facilities to meet all the standards of social distancing. 
He said that Amazon has ordered millions of face masks to give to employees and contractors who can't work from home, quote, but very few of those orders have been fulfilled. This is as of five days ago. Uh, he said it's easy to understand why they need to go first to hospitals and clinics, but when our turn comes, uh, he's going to make sure that those masks go to employees and partners getting essential products to people. I took it as very good news that Jeff stated, my own time and thinking is now wholly focused on COVID-19 and how Amazon can best play its role. Uh, when Jeff Bezos puts all of his attention on something, that's a massive amount of brain power and will and uh, clear thinking and resources that are going toward it. And he, one of, uh, I think one of the aspects of his leadership that I've been, I've admired and I've noticed is his ability to focus himself on longer time horizons than I think most CEOs do. He's looking out five, 10 years in some, some cases a lot longer than that at some of his space activity. And I picture his uh, attention and thinking as kind of a laser that he's able to direct toward things that he uh, wants to accomplish. I, I don't picture him being a, a very distracted person, although he, he talks about randomness, too. I mean, he's not a robot for sure. But uh, that, that's a significant statement. When I, when I see Jeff Bezos say that he's devoting all of his focus on COVID-19, then that's, uh, I think good things will come from that. Oh, another thing I saw was that on his Instagram account, same place where I saw this letter to uh, Amazonians, uh, he posted a photo yesterday uh, that showed him having a video conference with the World Health Organization Director General on how Amazon is helping HW, uh, WHO respond to COVID-19. And he could see it in kind of a, a little screen up in this room uh, his picture was there. He was wearing a short sleeve gray jersey, and he was speaking into a room that had this uh, director of WHO and a couple of other staffers. It looked like a hand sanitizer on the on the table. Pretty serious uh, look to everyone's face on this picture that he put up on uh, Instagram. And in that uh, post, we get to see kind of the other aspects of Amazon's resources being aimed at the crisis. He talked about increasing capacity and security for the WHO website. These are things which Amazon is doing through Amazon Web Services, AWS. Uh, also uh, deploying machine learning and AI for WHO's epidemic intelligence. And that's, he said, that's from the open source initiative. So somehow, you know, AI and machine learning are central to just everything that goes on in Amazon, and those resources are now being uh, devoted toward uh, some work that's already being done by the WHO. And then another aspect of it was translation and transcription of WHO's knowledge catalog, as well as logistics support. Um, they also discussed the urgent need to produce and distribute plentiful COVID-19 test kits. Another good source for what's going on at the company is the day one, which is the Amazon blog. You can find that at blog.aboutamazon.com. And today there was an update which had more information about AWS that talked about a partner of AWS named Conduent, C-O-N-D-U-E-N-T, described as a business process and services company. And they uh, have the ability to help governments at different levels track COVID-19's spread. And the product that uh, Conduent has is named uh, Maven. It's a disease surveillance management platform, and it's, power it's powered by AWS. And uh, until June 30th, uh, Conduent is going to waive the software license fee that normally would apply for use of this software maven uh, to make it available for qualifying state and territorial health agencies to fight COVID-19. Uh, I, I saw another thing that MIT is taking a lead in this and some of the other countries, uh, China, I think South Korea, they've, uh, there have been uh, ways to track people using their iPhones, which obviously raises privacy issues, but giving uh, macro big data ways to 
understand and perhaps control the spread of the virus based on people who are known to have tested positive with it. <laughs> that, that assumes having more tests than we have at this point. And then just using location technology as a tool. That, that seems like obviously we would be powerful. And uh, at this point, uh, MIT and then also this company that's working with AWS Conduent are working in that direction, which uh, could could really help us down the road. Another post at day one was talking about the ways Alexa is being deployed to help out. And one of them was uh, the ability to, to ask her for diagnosis if you think you have COVID-19. And I, I tried this. Let's just get it going here. I'll turn the microphone toward the Echo Show here. And we'll ask a question and see if she can... Uh, Alexa, what do I do if I think I have COVID-19? If you think you have COVID-19, I can ask you a few questions based on CDC guidelines to help you make a decision about seeking medical care. Do you have a few minutes for this? Yes. Before we get started, if you have a medical emergency, call 911 now. This is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical attention and shouldn't be used for children under two years old. Do you want to continue? Yes. First of all, do you feel sick? No. Do you live with someone who has or is believed to have COVID-19? No. In the last 14 days, have you had close contact within about six feet with someone who has or is believed to have COVID-19? No. And finally, in the last 14 days, have you been to a country or area with a high rate of COVID-19 spread? No. Since you feel well and had no clear exposure to COVID-19, CDC guidelines indicate it's unlikely you have the virus. For any specific restrictions or guidance in your area, check with your state or local health officials. I can also share a few tips on how to prevent getting the virus. Would you like to hear them? Yes. The CDC recommends the following preventative actions, practicing social distancing, washing hands frequently for at least 20 seconds, limiting events or meetings that require close contact, limiting touching the face, avoiding contact with those who are sick, remaining at home if sick, covering coughs or sneezes with a tissue, and disinfecting items frequently touched. I, I assume if I had answered some of those questions in the affirmative, there would have been a different uh, set of answers that she came up with. Another uh, thing, if you're wondering how long 20 seconds is, and that's the recommended time for washing hands, you can try this. Alexa, sing a song for 20 seconds. Okay, here we go. Wash your hands, everybody. Everybody, wash your hands. So here's a song, sing along. Tell germs nope, grab the soap. Make soap bubbles on the double. Halfway there, give a mean stare to all the germs. Make them squirm, say goodbye, don't be shy. Rub a dub, give a good scrub. Suds a plenty, now you're at 20. Uh, that blog post that I found at day one said that Alexa can answer tens of thousands of questions related to COVID-19, uh, including one is that you can ask uh, Alexa to schedule a blood donation with the American Red Cross. The way you do that is say, Alexa, open Red Cross blood. Uh, there are some fun things, too. If you say, Alexa, what should I do today? Uh, it comes up with... Uh, possibilities in various categories. Uh, one I tried ended up with the question of the day, and that was kind of fun. Apparently, it's a game that each day you get a question, and I, I got the right answer by identifying the capital of Australia, and then I got six points, and it was all say, well, you come back, and you might get another six points, bravo, and uh, that was a fun thing to do, and, and there's lots of other entertainment types of things to, to do on Alexa, and then, of course, on the whole uh, Prime video catalog and i think that uh i saw that kindle unlimited is now being offered with a two-month free trial or just two months free i i don't think it's a trial i think it's just opening up the ability for people to read books uh, under kindle unlimited during this crisis 
And Kindle Unlimited started out with a pretty thin offering, but it's quite robust now. I, I have it. It's $10 a month. And frequently when I'm looking for a book, I'm pleasantly surprised to find that I can download it as one of my 10 Kindle Unlimited books uh, for, for, for free. And uh, so if you haven't tried Kindle Unlimited, now's a, a time when you can get it free for uh, two months. Audible has got a lot of free content and uh, a lot of kids content is being made available via Amazon as well. Uh, David Enzel wrote a post, and I'll have a link to it. Uh, he was uh, commenting on some other news. You know, when you think about these activities that Amazon is undertaking, and uh, uh, Jeff in his uh, message said that even President Trump had praised him. I hadn't actually seen that, but I'm sure it's true. Uh, a notable foe of Bezos uh, in the past. But, you know, hiring 100,000 people and raising wages at a time when other companies are being forced to lay people off and, and really take tough measures, uh, I think that is something which earns some respect uh, for Amazon at this time. And then also uh, the role of the Washington Post. I mean, I know that's in some ways a polarizing uh, source of media. Some people think that that's not the best place to get news compared to Fox or others. But uh, I, I'll have to just admit that I think that the the coverage uh, by the Washington Post of this coronavirus has been thorough. It's been deep. It's been uh, professional. Uh, they do things like track every single death so far. The f story I read a while back was the first hundred deaths. Now it's up over a thousand, and they're they're assigning people to actually just understand what are the age of the of these people, what are the circumstances, and uh, you know that that kind of reporting takes lots of uh, resources in terms of time and people. And the fact that Jeff Bezos bought the Washington Post, I think it's now about five years ago, uh, is is quite, uh, I think there's a real benefit just in the chance to get information about this from around the world to people in a timely basis. So, you know, I don't think Jeff Bezos or the team there is doing these things just for PR benefit. But sometimes when you do the right thing and uh, in the midst of extreme circumstances, that can lead to uh, reevaluation re or perhaps new appreciation for those of us that basically think Amazon's been doing a pretty good job so far, uh, even in normal times. That's certainly my feeling. And I'll say I'm very proud of the company uh, in the, the way that it's stepped up to this situation. And I expect that to continue until uh, until we have a vaccine. That's That's the end point of all of this uncertainty that we're facing. So that's the news, and I'd like to turn now to my conversation with Darlene. We uh, At the cottage here, the front porch gives us a view of the ocean, and it's set in a grove of uh, fir trees. So we, we had some accompaniment from a... There was a songbird sitting high up in the tree next to us, and I think pretty sure you'll hear it. I was recording with my iPhone 11, which has a pretty fantastic uh, microphone, so you, you hear the bird, and then also the rumbling in the back is the waves that uh, we can hear from that porch. And uh, we were having our coffee, and without much preparation, I just asked if I could turn on the microphone and, and record a conversation that uh, Darlene has been on the show uh, for quite a while now. And I, I know I always love to hear her voice when I listen to it afterwards, so I, I hope you'll enjoy uh, hearing from her again. Here we are for the Kindle Chronicles on Friday, March 27th, the day after your birthday. Yes, it is. Where are we? We are in Ocean Park, Maine, sitting on the porch, looking out at the ocean and listening to the birds and the trees, and the sun is shining down on us. It's fabulous. This is, a, this is about as good as it gets for a sun worshiper like you. <laughs> it is, it is. I would rather be inside at the table <laughs> with the light coming through the window, but this I is all right. It's 44 degrees here, so. Yeah, I'm sitting here just in a long sleeve t-shirt. It's perfect. Yeah. I have my highs and my lows, but I have my highs when there's no wind blowing and the sun is shining and I can sit on the deck. Yes, that's pretty good. Mm. I like how when the waves break out there, the foam is being blown back by the breeze, and so there's 
We like these. I don't know what they are. What, what do those look like to you? Those wispy things when the wind blows the foam. It looks like hair curlers, somebody yeah. told me once. <laughs> <laughs> when I moved to Texas and I was the only kid in my class that had seen the ocean, I said that the waves look like hair curlers rolling in toward the shore. <laughs> Early poetic description. That's right. Kids today wouldn't even know what hair curlers I are. I know, I know. I think that's right. Huh. Well, you've been reading your Kindle a lot. I have. I've just been reading junk, you know, nothing great. I mostly am reading my Kindle before I go to bed, and I just want something. I've been just reading love stories and things that are not complicated at all because I just want a sort of relaxed, good feeling, and then and help me sleep. Yeah. So I think I need to get some more challenging books and... Um, now that we are getting more sun and you can sit on the deck, I mean, I can have, you know, read a good book and get some audibles. And So you switched to a paperweight from a Oasis or you still I, miss yeah, the I don't really Oasis. like it. I still miss the Oasis. If I could have that back, I'd take it in a heartbeat. Anybody who has an old Oasis that wants to sell it, <laughs> I am so available. <laughs> the original Oasis with a smaller screen. Yes. And, that, liked. and it uh, charges in the book cover. Oh, yeah, it's weird, because yeah. the case is part of the battery, so Right. But you liked just the size of it. The size was fabulous, and also just the buttons worked for me. Oh, yeah, because it had physical buttons. You had both. You could do physical right. buttons or the other, but I found, I, I'm finding that I, um, weird things happen when I'm touching the, the screen, yeah. you know, like uh, sometimes it goes back because I've touched the side, the left side, and sometimes I've done something and then all of a sudden it starts going and showing me the chapters and, you know, the listing of the chapters and I don't know where I was and then I'm trying to find my way back and I don't know, that stuff didn't happen with my Oasis. Right, because your thumb was always just on the physical yeah. button. Yeah, and I could, and I could flip it around, you know, so I could use the button either way. And yeah. Uh, well, know. did you ever try the one I like that has a larger screen? You didn't like the Oasis because it had the screen was too large. And I don't. I've never tried that one. Do you have one of those? Well, that's what I'm using. Yeah. Oh. We could get you one. It could be a. <laughs> I should read something on your book, on yours, so oh. I can see if I like it for oh. a half hour. You mean, let you use my Oasis? Oh, there's a couple of. Beautiful labs, or maybe oh. they're goldens. I think they're goldens. There, there are the cream-colored labs. Yeah, going out to the dune. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what kind of that, a bird. I that think is. that is a lab. We are hunting for a small dog. If anybody knows about somebody <laughs> who has a small People said a dog. Kindle Oasis with a dog, huh? Yeah. I, <laughs> Package I, deal. I miss Claire so much, and I want some kind of small dog that's not going to be under 10 pounds, and I am going to love that dog, and it is going to have the best life with me. I know what its name is going to be. And you want to name it Sophie. Yeah, you're okay with that? I don't know. It depends on the dog. If it's a male, it's going to be really bad. <laughs> it's like Mike's, Rue's husband, Mike's father, has a female dog he named Einstein. Yeah, exactly. It's so confusing. <laughs> you have that moment in your head when you say, is it a he or a she? <laughs> and I always am calling him he because of her name. Einstein is a, mm -hmm. is a she. Mm hmm Yep. Well, I don't think it makes any sense to get a dog before we know whether either of us is going to get the virus. I get what you're saying, but I just, I, I just, I have all this time on my hands and I could train it and I could love it and I could take it for walks. And in the midst of a tragedy, which this feels like a tragedy to me, to have something uplifting and there's nothing like having a puppy running around and <laughs> just pooping uh, everywhere. No, come on. Well, you are so negative about this. Anyway, I'm trying to be positive, but yeah. And we can't have a cat because we have the, uh, my stepdaughter's allergic, and maybe one of the grandkids. Yeah. And so I would love a cat. It would sit on my lap, and I could pet it. But anyway, so if anybody knows about somebody <laughs> who. <laughs> As a small dog <laughs> or small puppies, we'll just 
yeah, you would they like have to, to know. be hypoallergenic, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they do. I want a basset hound. <laughs> they weigh too much. Anyway, that's my that's my dream. If I could have anything right now, it would be a puppy to play with. Well, it makes sense. If, but I mean, when I'm reading that story about the woman's husband who has coronavirus in New York, and she's, you know, painfully walking him three blocks to the clinic to get his x-rays and quarantining him in his room, I think if you put a puppy in that picture, would it, it wouldn't be kind to the puppy or the family. It would give that teenage girl something to do. She could go out and walk that puppy and, yeah. um, you know. I mean, it wouldn't be good for the sick person to be around the puppy. They say if you're sick to not be around your your pets, but otherwise they say it's fine. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, I'm trying to be open to this, so. I don't think you have to worry. I don't know how I'm going to get my hands on one. I've been on the Internet looking at all the dumb dog leagues, the human. You should just go to the Old Orchard Beach Rescue. I've looked. Most of them are pit bulls. I've looked pit everywhere. Bulls. Yeah, and we don't want a pit bull. We don't even want to part pit bull. I mean, they're too big for one thing. And, yeah. But that's what people are turning in that they can't handle is pit bulls. And so you've checked the rescue places around Everywhere, here? every state around us. You're doing us. more work on this than I know. <laughs> I'm checking everything. I look up, I put in the internet, puppies for sale. You're I like, like the number of people who have coronavirus who that we don't know yet. It's like, I think there's already a dog on its way. <laughs> I wish there was. Yeah, I found one in New Jersey, but I don't think we could get to it. But it's only going to be four and a half pounds, and we do not want a four and a half what pound dog. What kind is that? Uh, it's a Miki, huh. but four and a half pounds is a pound smaller than Claire, and we we're just too absent-minded. I mean, it's going to sit on her. Yeah, or step on her or something. I mean, yeah. it's got to be six to ten pounds, I think. I like that little schnoodle we saw the neighbors walk by with. You didn't like that one? Yeah, but I think it was like 20 pounds or something. Well, that's so, all right, isn't it? No. It's too big? It's too big, yeah. No. Claire was really well designed for all the travel we did. Yeah. Well, okay, I mean... I just figure, with the, you know, we'll put the word out, maybe somebody will know about one and... <laughs> The airlines, this interview is over. We, we could buy a seat, and they could like not, you know, put the they could put the dog You'd in the seat, seat on the, the dog plane. Would be the only passenger on the plane. Well, exactly. Probably. That's what I'm thinking, and you know, <sighs> but then we have to get someone to go to the airport for us and pick it up. But yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe we put a sign out here in the cottage. Just lots of people walk their dogs along, and somebody's <laughs> wanting these find their dog a new home <laughs> there's not Just that many leave dogs. your dog here i check every dog that comes by believe me <laughs> what you ask if they want a new home no no but they're all big dogs oh i see yeah i haven't seen any little dogs go by yeah so. well i was talking to my young friend today and we just had to lay off people at the startup he works and he was telling the people he fired nobody is going to think it's strange that you lost your job so your ability to look for the kind of job you want anywhere it's almost as if the whole society and economy is being rebooted and everybody is going to have a chance to figure out if what they were doing was best suited for them and what they might try to do in the future and given all the changes, but... Well, that's a great way to put it, as long as they can get another job. At 25% yeah. unemployment, there's going to be a lot of people that just can't get a job. Well, he's talking about him and his wife starting a company somehow, you know, doing something on the Internet or whatever. I mean, they've got resources, but yeah. Oh, huh. well, I talked to my best friend yesterday, and she was telling about her husband's uh, cousin, who is in South Korea watching his grandchildren... Uh, because the parents of the grand of the grandchildren are like colonels and stuff in the army, and everything was going well there. They'd even been for a two mile walk, and then somebody in their office got tested positive, and now all six of them are quarantined in a small little apartment in South Korea. And I think we're just really realizing that we're not even close to getting this under control. But when we do we're still going to have all these outbreaks. Yeah, it's not until gonna, there's a vaccine. Until there's a vaccine. Yeah. And 
South Korea has done such a better job than we did at squashing it, but yeah. um, it's just a little bit depressing. you got to find something positive to focus on. Like a dog. Like a dog or being able to sit in the sun and listen to the birds chirp or... Well, and I don't know what gives me the right to criticize your dog idea when I bought an iPad Pro that's going to arrive in a week. That, but it's just it's something that I'm really curious if it's going to be the end of the laptop computer when these tablet computers actually do everything a laptop can do. And, and uh, I guess if I get an iPad Pro, you ought to be able to get a puppy. You just got to find a puppy. Yeah. I think we just have to be grateful every day that we're alive, we're healthy, our family members and friends yeah. at this point are alive and healthy, and if there ever was a time to live one day at a time, this is it. Yeah. It's like everything can be reimagined. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Dad's doing okay at the place he's living at. They're taking really good care of everybody. No cases yet. We talk by Echo Show a lot. The Echo Show, you, you talked to your friend Christy in Wyoming, Yeah, right? that was really wonderful. Did they just drop in, or how did it work? Well, she texted me that she wanted to know how to drop in, and then there was a problem. But So I dropped in on her, but I think she's got it solved, so she can drop in on me now. And then you... You dropped into her mother, who also has Right, because she got her mom one, because we were telling her about how nice it worked for your dad. And, um, yes, because Will is, like, he's so great on it. Yeah. And so she got, Donna got one, and she is really enjoying it. Yeah. So, and sometimes even the nurses use it to play music and to do other stuff when they're doing activities. Oh, and, cool. Uh, yeah, it's been really useful. Huh. So... Yeah, I, you know, Dad knows how to do FaceTime. I do FaceTime with my sister a lot, but I, I tell you, it's just, it feels like the person's closer, mm-hmm. especially on the big Echo show with the bigger screen, and the right. image is always so clear, and, uh, and you don't have to figure out how to hold the iPhone mm-hmm. while you're doing the FaceTime. Uh, it's pretty wonderful. Yeah, I think it is. I'm going to, yeah, I've decided I'm just going to set up some coffees with some of my friends, and... Um, if they don't have the Echo Show, then I'll do a Zoom or something. But right. I just think it really makes a difference to just have a 20-minute coffee. Yeah. Well, and you're thinking um, that's one of the birthday presents I didn't get to yesterday on your birthday is to sort of reconfigure your Facebook. But right. why, why do you want to sort of do that? Well, so when I first started using it, I mean, I didn't use it forever, and then I first started using it, and... So some of my quilts had been put up, and so then people wanted to friend me. And so I just said yes to everybody who wanted to friend me for a while and thinking that it would be other quilters and I'd get to see their work and stuff like that. But um, that didn't really turn out to be true. So I have all these people that I don't even know, and it's not so much that their work is being shown on it's just everything about them and their families and all the things that people put on Facebook, but I don't know these people, so I'm not interested. So I find that I don't go to Facebook. So I'm thinking if I cleaned it up and just had people I knew and family and friends and, you know, people I do want to know what's going on in their yeah. lives, that I might figure out a better way to use it. Yeah, um, I think that's true. And then what's the one that you, just shows pictures? Instagram. Instagram, yeah, and I'd like to get on that. That's nice, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think why not? We're here. We can do some, take some time to do some techno stuff that we don't, right. haven't done in the past. So, and I want to learn how to record on Zoom. So when I talk with my friend and my teacher and she critiques my quilts, okay. I can... Um, record like do a video of what because she can bring stuff up and circle parts and yeah but so i've got some of the pictures that she circled and stuff but i don't often you know i'm not doing that well i don't well. know if you can record video on zoom i'll have to check that i know that you can record audio and when i recorded a 45 minute conversation with uh, 
someone a few days ago it took like ten minutes for the file to be created at the end of the conversation right but it still did it I think it's uh, something yeah. about face something not face a screen recording or something I don't know Liz my niece was talking about she said she's done it oh. and that you can do it pretty easily okay. but she said it would be better for us to do it than for Susan to try to do it and then send it to us it'd be better just oh the so you're just recording it. what's on your computer you're not really doing it through zoom I know how to do that. well I'm on zoom doing it yeah. that's how I'm doing it right but you're recording locally on your computer using something like uh, uh, what's the thing QuickTime yeah. And it'll it records everything on your you know, if you switch from Zoom to something else it would just record your screen. Right. <clears throat> that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I would like to do. And I'd like to try that good with the thing you have a tech see. guy in the house that can help you with things I know. like that. Oh, there's so many cool things you can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm learning there's this really odd song that Steve, my guitar teacher, taught me in our last lesson three, four weeks ago, however long it was, called Ramblin' Boy. And it's a song about, it said, uh, he was my pal, a friend always, we rambled around in the hard old days. So it's just two guys rambling, and then the one guy gets the flu in a, uh, some kind of a jungle camp, and he dies. Oh, jeez. And the guy is now saying, you know, if, if when we die, there's somewhere we go, I'll bet you a dollar that he's there so it's a very poignant song and i don't know steve picked the song as the pandemic was arising or not but it's and it's a beautiful song it's just a really simple heartfelt song by tom wait uh tom paxton and every day i just practice it i'm going to have it absolutely nailed so i can you know memorize it and it's just really calming to and, and oddly calming because the song deals with death and Hmm. And, and flu and friendship and loss and, but it's turned into something beautiful and to be able to learn it and learn the chord transitions and the picking and all that it's that's some of the best stuff I do each day wow That bird at the top of the tree, you have any idea what he is? No, he's very vocal, and I like that about he's just, him. He's very small. My friend Kess would know immediately. Yeah. I should send him a picture. Well, it's hard to get a good picture. I can't it's even like see he's, him. He's picked the tallest branch of that fir tree next <laughs> to the cottage. So that it's about an inch high, it looks like. probably sending a message to other people. I don't know. Other birds. What if I can get some bird seed or something, put it down so that yeah. I can bring some birds in. Huh. Amazon, I need a bird feeder and <laughs> oh, bird seed. I, yeah, I was going to ask you, you've been doing some good research on uh, safely handling packages because we're, we're able to get, we've got a Whole Foods del delivery coming tomorrow from the Portland Whole Foods. Right. We had to sort of go in, when I put the order in, uh, at first, there weren't any available delivery slots when I checked out, but then I thought to, at 2 a.m. in the middle of the night, I went and checked my card, and when I went to check out, sure enough, there were spots that I could get it delivered. So I think if you're trying to order from Whole Foods, depending on your availability where you are, uh, if you're kind of persistent, once you've got your order in, you, you might happen to show up just after they've freed up a, a few more orders. But we've been getting Amazon stuff and things that we need and what... Oh, can we send a link to that video by the doctor yeah. on how to buy groceries safely and how to... Yeah, yeah, to, I'll put that in the show uh, notes. And how to bring them into your house okay. and how to bring... What did you learn food. about that? Well, that we weren't doing anything right. Oh. So it really was, uh, it was really uh, helpful. And um, so I've been going through all the spray bottles and bottles of stuff here to try to find out which stuff really are disinfectants and yeah. and how to disinfect everything as it comes in. And Is and it still a good idea to leave it on the porch for five hours after it's delivered? So they're talking about you leaving your groceries out for three days and only bringing in what you need and not bringing anything into the house and then how to uh, dump it in other containers and uh, huh. how to wipe it down um, and 
Well, is it still? I, I read somewhere that the virus can last on cardboard for only an hour. But then somebody else said that it can last for a long time, so it's better to just not take the shot. He gave an example of that on metal, I can't remember how many days and, and wood and stuff he was talking about, but then he said on some of these cruises, they went back to surfaces, and 17 days later it still had uh, the virus on. I don't know how they know that. but huh. So he's just saying you don't know, so it's best right. to not bring any of that stuff into your house. Yeah. Um, and, but he just talks about it. He just has a really methodical way. He, talk, he's, he shows you how to do it in the same way that they would do it if they were disinfecting to go into surgery or something. Uh And it just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, Well, I heard something about glitter. What was the comparison with glitter? He said that you're going to think about it like glitter. If there's glitter um, in a box or something, you don't want to get the glitter on your surfaces. And so uh, you have a clean surface and a dirty surface, and you put things out and sit them on the dirty surface, and then you're cleaning them and you're moving them to the clean surface or putting them away, and then how to scrub everything down. And um, and he was saying things like oranges and apples and all sorts of things like that, that you're going to put them in soapy water and you're going to scrub each uh, apple or orange for 20 minutes, 20, or 20 seconds. seconds, just like you would uh, washing your hands and scrubbing yeah. your hands, right? And then rinse it. And so, I mean, it's just um, well, it makes sense. I mean, I sort I of thought know. just because we're not having any contact with people, we're safe, but obviously, uh, there's risk of stuff arriving on these deliveries. Well, this is very professionally done, and yeah. I intend to go back and read it or watch it again. Yeah. I think it's 12 minutes long or something. It seems like a minute when you're watching it. Yeah. And it's just it's very well done by somebody who really knows. Huh. Um, is he a doctor? Yeah, he's a doctor. Yeah. And he might even be a surgeon. I don't know. I missed part of the first part of it. Because yeah. um, when it comes in at first, for some reason, it's hard to get the audio going oh. on him. But then they got it and... So, anyway. A lot of people that are doing things to help. It's Mm -hmm. in the midst of the controversies and conflict. You see a lot of the best of humanity. Mo Williams, the children's author, was reading his work Uh. every day so that you could (laughs) tune in and see that. And he was doing little seminars on. He's got this famous pigeon in a lot of his stories don't let the pigeon drive Drive the the bus bus, and all these different ones about the pigeon and so he was giving little lessons um, that you could tune into with the kids on how to draw a pigeon it's kind of a real cartoony pigeon Mm -hmm. and but it's very distinct and um, yeah Cincinnati Zoo had places you could go in and watch them they would go to a certain animal every day and then talk about the animal and it was a video it was fabulous so many people are doing cool things wasn't there I don't know if it was in Denver, but there was one zoo. They let the pitch, the penguins walk around, and the penguins were looking in the glass at the other animals. Oh, I don't know. I didn't really see that. Cool. Then there was another one. They had puppies running around a zoo. So it's huh. like, you know, since nobody can go to the zoo, let, yeah. the, let the animals enjoy it. Well, the one I saw, they had hippos, and for some reason, I've never seen this before, you were looking through a wall of glass, so like... Imagine hippos in a swimming pool, but you can see them on the bottom. Oh. You're like on the same level they are. And they were talking about how hippos don't really swim, they walk on the bottom. Huh. And so you see them kind of loping along the <laughs> bottom, and that was a baby and a mama. Oh, and, good. and then telling all about different things about the hippos. And it was just, I mean, as an adult, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. So it's great for kids, they love animals. There's kind of a, there's sort of a paradox because. One of the benefits of you know being here, for sure, we don't have kids and we're just here in this wonderful spot. You tend to think, well, we can just do without screens. We can sit on the porch and we can sit by the fire. But then there's all this great stuff to see coming in over the screens. Yeah. And it's inspiring. Yeah. I mean, somebody texted me this morning and they said, you know, what can you advise for moods or you know, right. to keeping your spirits up? And so I, I think that. It, that can be helpful, but I think getting out in nature is really helpful. Getting yeah. out for a walk for me takes some of my nervous energy. And, yep. you know. Well, we've got a bike ride coming up because we drove down to Cambridge to get the bikes yesterday. Yeah. I can't wait to get out on that 
14 mile trail we do. Yeah, we'll see. It might be too cold for that. But we'll, I mean, we'll go for a bike ride, but it might. Yeah. It's, you know, it'd be nice to get a little warmer and no wind. But right now, there's no wind yet, and the sun is coming down, so it's beautiful. I think it could be about right. Well, that might be muddy in the woods. It would be really interesting to hear what other people are doing to uh, keep their spirits up yeah. and what they're appreciating in this crazy yeah. environment that we are right. in. And yeah, I'd love to hear if people could send us you know, podchronicles at gmail.com if you've got stories to tell or things you've learned in this so far. There was a woman on the meeting I was at on Zoom this morning who was calling in from New Zealand. And it always just strikes me. That, I mean, our family's going through it. We know what's going on in Boston and New York. And then all of a sudden, you hear from somebody across the other side of the world in exactly the same situation. I, 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 I can't imagine another time in history when... Everybody's going through the same thing, and there's so such an easy way to connect with people, so that you you know that they're going through the same thing. Seems like some good ought to come out of that. Well, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me out into the sun. I would have been sitting there on the other side of the window, thinking I was in the best spot, but. This is the best spot. This is the best spot. And maybe I, I mean, maybe it's better for me because I'm lower. I don't know, but I'm just, I'm not having any wind at all. It's just perfect. No, the flag is flapping just slightly. Are you, are you cold up there? Well, I wore my jacket, so it's good. No, but I mean, just here. Are you cold? No, you don't feel no, cold. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, it may sometimes pay to be lower, you know? Could be. How's the weather down there? God, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just sit out here and listen to that little bird up there. He's just, he's been there the whole half know, hour we've been here. I know, he's just talking. I wonder what he's saying. I, I think he's saying it's going to be okay. Pretty song. He's going to be saying the worst is still to come, but we're going <laughs> we're to persevere. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I can't think of anyone I'd rather be trapped with in a beautiful place like this than you. Yeah. Some days. <laughs> That's it for this week. Uh, I can still see the waves out there, but it's pretty dark. I have a good view of the Wood Island Lighthouse, which flashes a green light over this direction. Maybe that means good weather coming. I have reached out to James McCrivey to see if he might be able to join us next week uh, from Forrester Research. I see that he's been doing some survey work at companies monitoring people's reactions to the coronavirus uh, threat and how different companies are dealing with it. So that would be interesting to hear about. And then also just uh, James is somebody who scans reality with such uh, insight that I would be fascinated to get his take on everything about this. And, and perhaps uh, particularly given his long study of the media, what is changing even as we're in real time now about the media and how might the media landscape and the work life landscape uh, be radically changed uh, even when we get to the end of it. So with any luck, we'll be you'll be hearing from James McCrivey next week. Uh, please take care of yourself and thanks for listening. Take care. Bye. <laughs>